You know what's funny? People come to me and they ask me, hey, man, did you see what Andrew Reed said on um, Instagram Live and all this other stuff? Talking about he's not going to fight and he's bringing the fight back to the U.S. and stuff like that. What you think about that, Bruce? What you think about that? And the interesting is, I've already gave you a video. Actually, two videos is real prevalent to what's going on right now. In the last video, when I asked you, was the contract signed? I told you guys, I wasn't signing off on the fight. I said, I wasn't going to believe that that fight and that deal was made until Andy Ruiz came out on Twitter or on Instagram, just like he does everything else and say that the fight is signed. I'm not listening to Eddie Hearn, DeZone, Matt Trum, and all of them no more. You know, I literally did a video on that. What? Like three or four days ago. I told y'all, you know what I'm saying? Cause it's suspicious to me. They having a press conference and then he's not there. Joshua's not there. I'm like, Oh no, 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 no. The only way I'm going to say that this fight is done is when I see Andy Ruiz say it. That's the only confirmation that I'm going to take. And I told y'all, and I also dropped a video before that that said something's not right, Eddie. Basically saying that something's wrong with the contract. Now, if something wasn't wrong with the contract, I don't see how Andy Ruiz, well, what is he doing all this pump faking for? I don't, I don't see why he's doing all this fronting for us. You know, if you got to follow the rules and if you got to do that and if you got to do this, then I don't know why you're getting on Instagram just to make yourself look stupid because you're going to have to do everything that you said you wasn't going to do in the end. So that's what makes me believe that something's wrong with the contract. And best believe, there's some kind of loop. There's something there, okay? Uh, Andy Reid's team, Al Heyman, something is there. We don't know what it is, but trust me, something is there. Because like I said, there's no reason why, Ed, uh, why Eddie Hearn should be showing them all this respect and they have done nothing but show him their ass the entire time but eddie still talked about you know we got to respect this we got to respect you don't have to respect anybody that's why you got a contract okay respect is irrelevant when you sign a contract so i don't get it but um andy we saying that he doesn't have any protection over there in saudi arabia and and this is my ultimate counter to that truth be told and i don't care who get offended about it truth be told mexico it's more dangerous than Saudi Arabia, and he wanted to go there, so make that make sense. Yeah, I don't care what you say, okay? That entire country is ran by the cartel. Who don't know that, okay? That entire country is ran by the cartel. You can't count on justice over there worth anything. Why do you think so many people flee that country and come over here, okay? That entire place is ran by the cartel. Drug money, period, from top to bottom. All the federalities, all that is corrupt. Who don't know Mexico is corrupt from top to bottom? It's more dangerous going over there than Saudi Arabia. In my honest opinion, all Saudi Arabia wants you to do is follow their rules, respect their country. That's it. Over there, shit. I watched a dude get murdered on uh, on uh, Instagram Live by just saying something about the cartels. They got him within the same time that he was making a video, shot this kid up like 500 times. Or how about when you go on vacation over there to Mexico, um, they tell you not to uh, travel too far off the uh, off the resort. You know what I'm saying? Blonde hair, blue eyed women, you have to keep a special watch on them when you're over there in Mexico because they're known to get kidnapped and stole and never to see their families again. These are facts. Kidnappings, getting your head chopped off, um, um, hanging you from over a bridge and all that. This is normal protocol over there in Mexico. So when he says he ain't got no protection over there, shit, who the hell's going gonna, to gonna protect you once you cross the borderline in Mexico? The cartel ain't going to do it. You know what I'm saying? So that's what that excuse didn't make no sense to me. I'm like, do you know how dangerous it is, it is over there in Mexico? Like, are you kidding like, for the right price, anything can happen over there in Mexico. Straight up. It's the most well-known corrupt country that we know of. So I didn't buy that Saudi Arabia. I didn't have no protection shit. Because quiet is kept, Mexico is more dangerous. Period. I don't care what you say. Do your facts. You know what I'm saying? Run. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure somebody want to go ahead and do the homework. Please go ahead and do the homework and then get back to Bruce. I know what I'm talking about. But that just goes to show you that that excuse he's talking about, man, that don't make no sense and don't hold no weight. None of that stuff holds no weight. It's just a game, man. It's just all just a game. But this is one thing that I will say to Anthony Joshua. Right after you get this rematch and stuff out of the way and uh, you knock this princess out, 
Listen to me. Take your ass back to the UK and don't come back. Make everybody have to bow down to you. If they want a piece of AJ, if they want a piece of the AJ sweepstakes, make them bring their ass over there to the UK. I told you before, don't come over here. All right? I didn't want you over here over here anyway because it's corrupt. And, and I always thought America corrupts anybody. You know what I'm saying? And I'm pretty sure that they was going to corrupt you in the process. But anyways, right after you get this rematch stuff out of the way, you know what I'm saying? Take those belts and go right back there to the UK. Whatever you are, you built over there in the UK. You do not need America. America is on its last dying legs in boxing. America is saved by UK British fighting, British boxers. Uh, American boxing is saved by what you guys are doing over there in the UK. Don't let nobody tell you different. The days of us being the big head, head honcho is over with, man. That shit is over with. We don't hold weight like that. Why? Because we don't produce the athletes that we used to. They don't go into boxing. They go into football. They go into basketball. They don't go into boxing. We're not producing the athletes. You guys are producing the athletes. Now, every other place is producing the athletes now. Okay? America didn't had its run. Okay? Like I said, this is your time to swing the Excalibur. Stop coming over here to America try, uh, 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 trying to kiss American ass to get some American money. You don't need it, man. You do not need it. So my advice to you, once you school this cat, if you school this cat, I don't know, Anthony Joshua. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm still on the fences with you. You know what I'm saying? Because you said you'll take... And this is just a side note. And I'll make a whole other video about this. I didn't get this with... Uh, I didn't get this when Anthony Joshua said this. He said, I will choose loyalty over skill. Yeah, we definitely gonna have to talk about that. You know, you know what I'm saying? Because that's why I'm still up in the air with Anthony Joshua. You're gonna stick with Rob McCracken because of loyalty, even though you know he doesn't have the skills to take you any further. Hmm. Anyways, but that's just something else for another video. But as far as Andy Ruiz, man, that's just some old bullshit ass excuse. It'd be the same amount of danger if they went over there and fought Tijuana or Mexico or whatever. So once again, just the Al Hamer shuffle, and it is what it is. Bruce Vane, leave your thoughts in the comment section. I'm out. Now, keep in mind, this is the same Matisse that Lamont Peterson has taken a loss to that he says is over Terrence Crawford. But I'm going to digress. And this is where the just asinine and just the ridiculousness of what Earl Spence is saying comes to fruition. How do you be come undisputed and have it be smoke and mirrors there's no way you can become undisputed and have it be smoke and mirrors when you clean out a division you clean out a division unless you're saying the entire division was frauds and Terrence Crawford was the only authentic fighter that is impossible what division have you cleared out Errol Spence what division have you been able to say I was undisputed in? Not one. 
the fact that he became one undisputed and 140 alone puts him leagues above Errol Spence as far as accomplishments go. Because in case as boxing fans, we forgot undisputed is the ultimate goal. Okay. How do you know undisputed is the ultimate goal? Just look at the reasons that you probably ridicule most boxers that you don't like. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people talk about um, Mikey Garcia not, not wanting to unify. Canelo Alvarez not wanting to unify. A lot of people talk about um, Mayweather um, not wanting to unify with, um, with uh, Keith Thurman. See, when you got something against a boxer, then y'all play that. How come you don't want to do the undisputed thing? But then when it comes to your favorite boxer, undisputed is not important. <laughs> Y'all crazy. Let's keep going. And that right there is a trick question. Manny Pacquiao, motherfucker. That's who he beat. You know what I'm saying? And I don't want to hear how I know. Oh, I don't think that. Uh, Jeff Horn beat Manny Pacquiao. When you look on boxing, right, does it say he beat him or does it not say he beat him? It says Jeff Horn beat him. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to go back and forth with people whether you think he won that fight or not. Jeff Horn mauled that man, okay? And how you know for a fact Jeff Horn beat him, the fact that Manny Pacquiao didn't even want to rematch the man. Think about that. He didn't even want to rematch him, Okay? So if you thought Manny Pacquiao was this, if you thought Manny Pacquiao was that, look at all those compliments that Manny Pacquiao's been getting this past couple of weekends. Talk about, oh, I think he's the greatest of all time. I think he's this and, and, and I think he's that. How the greatest of all time don't want to run, run back a loss. And this is the most incriminating part about all of it. Manny Pacquiao's career is built off of rematches. Anybody that knows boxing know that. It's built off of rematches. He rematched anybody else. But he didn't want to rematch Jeff Horn? Hmm. See, when you really competitive, you want to run that shit back. Ask Conor McGregor about Nate Diaz. When you really have that competitive spirit, when you take a loss, you want to run that back. How come Manny Pacquiao never wanted to rematch with Jeff Horn? I'll wait. How come? Okay. And he's talking about up, up here, he wants to fight a Keith Thurman. And he wants to fight a Manny Pacquiao. Check this out. But Manny Pacquiao did not even want to rematch Jeff Horn. And they had to send Terrence Crawford to go whoop his ass. Facts. Facts. The only problem with that is you're up here talking about fighting a Keith Thurman and Keith Thurman just got his ass whooped by Manny Pacquiao. The same Manny Pacquiao who got his ass whooped by Jeff Horn. OK, the same Jeff Horn who got his ass whooped by Terrence Bud Crawford. And check this. This is also the same Bud Crawford who has beat the same opponents as your two previous opponents that you say are better than Terrence Crawford. So once again, Errol Spence, what are you talking about? <laughs> you know what, Earl? I'm glad you brought that up. You just fucked up. <laughs> You can't 
can't make this shit up. <laughs> then you know what? This is about the only time boxing is fun to me. <laughs> you just said, if he was a top-level opponent, Bob Arum would have gave him the fight with Manny Pacquiao instead of Jeff Horn, okay? And there you have Bob Arum tell you, to your face, Manny Pacquiao has turned that fight down several times. Several times. So not only do you have to renege and backtrack, you also going to have to highlight that you said if he was a top-level opponent, he would have got the fight, right? Okay. So what does it say when the fighter, the fight that he's supposed to got, the fighter says, I don't even want to fight Bud. So do you know what you're saying about Bud? He's more than top level. He's your superior. <laughs> That's a fact, man. That's a fact. Y'all can't argue. You get mad all you want. I don't care. You can get mad all you want. I don't care because this was a long time coming. Straight up. This was a long time coming. Now talk that mess now. Talk that mess now. Look, you want to fight Keith Thurman, okay? Manny Pacquiao just blew out Keith Thurman, okay? Jeff Horn blew out Pacquiao, okay? Terrence Crawford blew out Jeff Horn. Plus, on top of that, Manny Pacquiao didn't want to rematch Jeff Horn, and he did not want to fight Terrence Bud Crawford. Come on now. Come on now. Come on. I, I can't wait to hear the excuses. What do you got to say now? You ducking. Everybody know you ducking. Okay? Everybody know you ducking. And here, I'm going to get to the premise of why this is even being done. You know? Shouts out to Shady Slim. Because Shady Slim put something on my radar that I totally forgot about. See, y'all may have forgot about the time that y'all was talking about Lomachenko like 40 going north. Y'all was saying how he ain't this, he's a hype job, and this, this, that, and the third. Y'all y'all talk about he wasn't nothing unless he fight a Guillermo Rigondeau. I know y'all remember that. Lomachenko was not shit unless he fought a Guillermo Rigondeau. And like Slim said, y'all forced Lomachenko to fight Guillermo Rigondeau. That was nowhere on his radar. That's the guy that you guys picked. And what did Lomachenko do? He said, all right, all right. So I ain't shit unless I fight him, huh? Y'all still gonna talk that shit? Okay, bet, run it. What'd he do? Made that bitch quit. Made that bitch quit. And, and what'd y'all do to Guillermo Rigondeau? Threw him under the bus. You know what I'm saying? The point is, why is it cool for you to put all that pressure on Lomachenko? And it was like, and, and Lomachenko couldn't ignore it. He was like, all right, all right. So, 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 so this is what you said I gotta do to be the man, huh? I was like, all right, all right, run it. Run it. He gave in. He succumbed to the pressure. Y'all was on Lomachenko head to fight Guillermo Rigondeau. He didn't plan on fighting Guillermo Rigondeau, but he did it just to prove he's really about that life. Now, all of a sudden, you saying people can't do the same thing to Errol Spence. Bullshit. That's illegal. I'm letting you know right now, I'm on a crusade. We're going to get that fight in their prime. We're going to get that fight. See, I'm going to pry the same kind of pressure to Errol Spence that the LDBC applied to Team Joshua and them, making them believe they had to come over here and jump to our beat. You know what I'm saying? No, I'm going to put the same kind of tactic pressure on Earl Spence. We going to get that fight in your prime. You know what I'm saying? Or I'm, I'm going to make it my personal business that everywhere you go, everywhere you know, you is the man that don't want none of Bud Crawford. This man got to run up on you. This man got to call you out. This man got to call your cell phone. He got to call you out on Twitter. He got to call you out on Facebook. He got to go in front of the cameras. He has done everything. And you have done nothing but shown your yellow streak this entire time. I'm not going for it. You're going to give me this fucking fight. If you are what you say you are, fight this man in his prime. If not, you scared. And you always going to be scared. And you ain't never going to be nothing to me. You started off as an all right dude, but you know, I guess once Al get into your head, you know what I'm saying? I don't, I, you know, I don't know what sweet nothings he be whispering in y'all ear to have y'all put on as Slim say that sweet perfume smelling called bitch. I don't know what he's saying to you, but all y'all be wearing that fragrance by the time y'all leave his office and I'm not having it. You're going to give us this fucking fight. I guarantee because I'm not going to let up off your damn head. You're going to give me this fight. I'm going to collect my money. And let's not forget, y'all bet a million dollars on this fight. Let's not forget that.
You know what I'm saying? And how I'm going to end this video, I'm going to end it simply like this. At the end of the day, Earl Spence exposed himself when a gentleman just asked a simple question. It's just a simple question. And here it is. Now, how did Earl Spence respond? Um, 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 uh, well, it's a good money fight. It is, you know what I'm saying? It's a good money fight. Now, let's listen to how Terrence Crawford responds to something like that. You see that? That's a throwback fighter. That's a real champion. He ain't talk about all that money stuff. He talked about, no, we're going to have to find out who's the best. It can only be one king. That's what he's concerned about. All Earl Spence is talking about, well, you know, I'm money. I'm A-side. You know what I'm saying? He ain't getting 50-50. This, 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 that, and the third. He on the wrong side of the street. Blah, blah, blah. Let him go get a belt. This, 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 that, and the third. Same bullshit. Andy be talking the same shit. Wilder be talking. You know, it's, it's the same old crap. Like I said, I'm not going for it. You're going to give me this fight, fucking coward.